Good evening, and welcome to our theater again. In this day and age, a name and a number in a card index file can imprison the mind and soul of a man every bit as thoroughly as handcuffs can confine his physical self. And that's why they serve as a theme for tonight's play. The setting of our story is, well, anywhere or nowhere. The time, yesterday, today, or in the tomorrows to come. The subject, what could happen when a man forgets the true meaning of freedom and sacrifices himself on the altar of regimentation? I'm very proud to present the famous comedian Buster Keaton, who for the first time in his long career plays a completely dramatic role. Also, we are fortunate in having James Hayter in a surprisingly different sort of part for him. The theme of Gogol's famous classic, The Cloak, has inspired a number of varied adaptations. And this new play of ours traces its origin to the same source. And now I'm very pleased to offer you The Awakening. Attention, attention. This is the State Diffusion Service. This is the State Diffusion Service. We remind you that all state entertainment programs will be interrupted at one o'clock today when the chief will speak to his people. The chief at one o'clock today. Attention, attention, attention. This is the State Diffusion Service. This is the State Diffusion Service. We remind you that all state entertainment programs will be interrupted at one o'clock today when the chief will speak to his people. The chief at one o'clock today. Blazing hot. It's been burning for hours. Hours! Don't lie to me. Costs me more to light your room than all the other rooms put together. Well, everyone cheats me. Everyone lies to me. Well, it's impossible. I can't even make my expenses anymore. I Oh, what's the use? I wouldn't mind if you were doing something, well, something important but wasting good electricity on this silly game. Silly game? Silly game. Why, the Bureau of Records holds our world together. For the first time in history, every human want is numbered. Understand me, I don't say a word against the regime, or our blessed chief, not one single word. Naturally not. It's just that... But it's you I'm thinking about, working night after night. Well, most men, when, when they have some time to spare, they will do all sorts of things. Going to the theater. They take out some silly girl. They visit each other. They play cards. They smoke a pipe. I'm afraid I'm not what you call popular. 400,000 classifications, 400,000 serial numbers to remember. Think of that. One case in particular kept me awake half the night. It was that interesting. Well, greetings, Vondor. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, it's cold outside. You were telling me about that interesting case. You were telling me. Oh, well, that woman, white, female, 34, two children, ill with typhoid, Hello. needed new serum to save their lives. Now, nine out of ten men in my department would have filed that. 7935-M. 
which would have been absolutely wrong because... <laughs> of the rumors. He's got a coat that's falling apart. It's the funniest thing I've ever saw. <laughs> Looked like a torn teddy bear. Some people just don't have any manners. <laughs> but the coat could do with some mending. Well, I was thinking of dropping by my tailor. I'll do it at lunch. A patch here and a stitch there will look as good as new. Of course. Uh, I'd better be going. Except that he looks so funny. Uh, one minute. What happened to the children? Children? The, the children who have been sick. Did they get the serum in time? Oh, I haven't the slightest idea. But it was numbered correctly. It was 78362 dash J, not M. How could it possibly be M? And how would I know about the children? That would be another department. Why do you ask? No reason at all. Don't forget your tailor at noon. Well? Oh, is your husband the tailor in? Do you see him? No. No, neither do I which means he's delivering a jacket, the sleeves of which he has lengthened, which means he's sitting down with the owner of the jacket having a long talk and a cheap cigar, which means that he'll charge the owner of the jacket exactly half of what he should charge him, which means that I shall have to go like a beggar this afternoon and try and get the rest of the money. <sighs> oh, wait, who cares? You haven't got your radio turned on. You're not listening to the chief's speech. His speech? It's already time for his speech. Whatever's happened to this morning, I, I thought it was an hour away yet. Oh, I missed him. Every one of you are in my deepest thoughts. Not one of all the faithful millions who call me chief shall be forgotten. Of that, you may be sure. Not an hour passes without some new exciting plan to bring my people a happier tomorrow. Just fill the house. When the last oh, enemy is destroyed, when his body lies broken and bleeding under our steel, then you will see what your chief has planned for you. Our little tots will grow as fat and pink as sausages, and grandfather and grandmother, they shall bask in warm sunlight in the sunset of their lives, Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Oh, I must have dozed off. What time is it? Well, it's past my lunch hour. I'll be late for work. Here. Fix this. I'll pick it up at 7 o'clock. Wait. The coat can't be repaired anymore. Well, what are you talking about? You've done it dozens of times. There's nothing left to fix. Cut it up and use it for shoelaces. Look at the trash people bring me. What am I? A tailor or a magician? Well, what's to be done? You must have a new coat. A new coat? Why, I hadn't figured on a new coat for at least five years. How much would a new coat cost? I could make a nice coat for you for... 200. 200? Oh, let's be sensible. I didn't come here for a new coat. I don't want a new coat. I don't expect miracles. Do the best you can. Out of the question. But don't you understand? I can't afford a new coat.